All right, here we are in Starve Rock, and we are on the trail close to the Starve Rock. I guess it's um, really close to the parking lot, actually not too far away. I found a bunch of caves, but there's no light in them because um, <laughs> they're caverns. And so I thought I'd do this one. And so here we're set up, and I don't have any internet here, so I'm gonna have to record it. And I'll record these, and I'll post them down later. And let me just get this started, but here's what we're painting. You can see the scene right here, close up. I already sketched it up. I start out with the, with the lights, like always. I always start out with your light areas. And I just noticed that I don't have paper towels, so I don't have to use leaves. <laughs> leaves in the area. So what I'm going to do is just going to start here. And let me see if I can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to go in here. Get my lights, my light colors, and it's giving me, I'm gonna leave some of the white because it's very, very light. This guy, it's a beautiful day today here. And what, what is it, March, <laughs> February? <laughs> so we're in February, um, not towards the end here, 20, what is it, 28th today? No, not 28th, 27th, 26th. And so we're just gonna go here and yeah, my light blue's in there. And way in the distance here, I'm going to take, and since there, there's so many trees back there, I'm going to put them together with a kind of a gray. And here's, I'm going to use a little bit of the blue, orange, because it's, it's, it's warm back there. But I'm going to cool it up a little bit, because I kind of want it to be, um, there's so many trees back here. I still want the blue shining through. So uh, basically what I'm doing is I'm, I'm letting some of the blue sip through, sip through some of this. There's a staircase way back there. You can see I'm in a little canyon here. I'm going to put this in together with a bunch of the, they're going to be soft edge trees instead of hard edge trees. Um, I'm just going to basically make it part of my middle tones but this again is still my lights and so I'm gonna kind of just going in there and getting the light trees work my way forward getting darker as I come along in front I, I took the trails this morning and I thought I would do some of the other canyons and stuff and but it ended up being too no reception um, for one and then there's no light in the canyons because they're a canyon <laughs> and, and this is the opposite of where the light is coming from so they weren't very good looking they're just very I, I mean I could have done something with them but the ones I took last night were a little bit nicer um, with the colors but that was in the evening and that was a, a different place there from where I'm at today this is actually at Starve Rock the other place was Met Madison Matheson I think Matheson um, trails so let's get a little bit of lavender in here. There's a lot of lavender in here. The blue and the red of the things in the background here just makes it very, very, makes it very lavender-ish. So I'm just basically starting with the big areas. I'm not doing the site to size and trying to make it look like just like what it is. I'm not I'm gonna kinda take it down now a little bit. And so then as I go down here I'm gonna make it a little bit darker. Again there's a lot of trees back here, so I'm doing this all soft edged, I'm trying to make it all soft edged. Darker as it goes there. And there's gonna be like an S through here for the darks. But again, I'm still doing my lights, and so I'm, I'm doing my lights in there. And lavender in there. I have a 
I'm putting this alive, I'm going to keep it out of weight. Uh, you guys think if we give him a dollar, he'll paint this in the painting? <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, stay, you got to stay there for a little bit, though. About an hour. <laughs> 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 hey. We're come back for you. Okay. <laughs> Alright, right there. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> So we hear some people come by. It's always fun. And again, just putting in my lights, but look at all the white that's out there. It's a little speckled light here. And so I'm putting that in there. Just getting that in there right now. A little speckled area. Because the lights will um, the darks will kind of get my pattern going a little bit more. Right now I don't I don't need the pattern all the way yet. I'm just again at, um, getting my lights in there. This is going to be a dark area. We got this area coming through here. Stair stepping. A little dapple of light going through there. And put a little bit of my light colors. And this is going to be. I think I'm going to. It's very gray out here. And, um, and since I'm looking right into the sun. <laughs> A lot of it's really, really dark, but that doesn't mean I can't put some color in there in the dark. Background is pretty much more lavender and more blues, and so I'm going to keep that at that and not make them as warm. But overall, I'm going to make this foreground warm. But it's so funny because when we're working in our in, inside, we're putting all, col all kinds of colors in there that... Are, are not really out there and not really in there <laughs> a lot of times because if I'm looking at this right now it's really not that colorful it's very a lot of grays in there and that's like how I think a lot of these um these famous artists they do a lot of um they use a lot of gray and I can see why now because and look at how much gray is in this scene so a lot of lavender a lot of black type of um, grays warm gray cool grays here I'm going to put some warm orange kind of colors in these leaves. There's a bunch of leaves right here. I'm just going to put that in there like that. Oh, am I standing in front of the camera? <laughs> Hopefully not. Right. So this is like light. And I have to squint my eye a lot. Squint your eye a lot to find out where your light's and dark pattern is. This is pretty much a sketch. You know, it's going to be more of a sketch, um, not too, too finished. I'm going to go in here and just capture the lights and darks and some of the colors I can get. And then if I want to do this again, I would do it in the studio. Look at all these beautiful things going in there. And this is just an amazing scene right here. I just got to keep a lot of light. I just got to keep a lot of light. I just got to keep white of the paper. So my dark, so there's a light right here, and then this is a, this is like a little bit of a branch sticking out of the ground, an old, old log right there. And it kind of goes too dark. This is all leaves. I'm going to speckle it later, you know, give it more of a um, texture. Come around here. It's very interesting because one of the ladies on that tour that just walked by, he knew my name. And he's like, I don't have it written on me. <laughs> so they must know that, must, must know me. <laughs> I'm going through here. This water um, is is so clear that it's, it's, sort of, it's just basically the gray or brown underneath. You know, it's underneath, but it's reflecting also the blue. So I'm going to get some of that blue that's in the sky. I'm going to put that in there first because that's the lightest part of the water. And so I'm going to put a little bit of that blue in there. Sorry about that. 
because if I get that blue in there, then I can um, show the reflections. And actually, there's some white specks in there that are shining in my eye because I'm actually looking into the sun. So you're going to get that. And there's a lot of green down here. It's in the moss that's sitting on the rack right here. There's a little moss coming through here. That black and there's a sun. Oh boy, see if I do that. Hmm. Let me just raise this up a little bit and see if I can get you guys more so that the sun is not blaring into the camera. There's nothing I can do about that. So a little bit like that. Get the green again, a little bit of green right here, edge of the rocks, there's a little moss on there. And a bunch of leaves. I know there's a sun hitting these and throwing shadow across it. I'm not going to put them in as much as I, I think because I don't want those, light, those lights to just direct your eye right to this foreground here. So this is going to be really, my dark is going right through here. Basically the water is the dark part and so... Green, mossy, lavender. And again, with watercolor, you put the lights on first, so you're just establishing some color schemes. And so, if it may, if it is gray like this, you're still going to want to do like the foreground, maybe a little bit warmer, the background a little bit cooler. Work your, work your big, large value pattern, and my pattern is like this S. You'll see the the trees and stuff when I put the darks in. We'll all make it look like like a nice pattern. A little green right on the edge of this rack here. And then we have dappled lights right here. But you don't have to make it as dappled as it is because um, I'm going to keep that as a light area. Always remember that big, the big value patterns is what you want. The big value pattern is so important. So I tend to look for the big value pattern and then stick with it. No matter what happens with the lighting, I got to stick with that, and I, I don't have any of my lights in there, so you don't see a pattern right now. I'm just getting color, is what I'm doing right now. I'm capturing color in the areas, so that later on, when I put my darks in, that'll give me the, the look I want of a value pattern. No value pattern quite yet. This is my lights. I'm still putting in my lights and my textures, some of the textures of the, of the leaves. And so how do you get the texture? Do you dabble? Do you, um, you know, how do you, what, what do you do to make it, do you spatter? You know, spatter to get the texture? Do you um, scrape it? A lot of people do different things for different, you know, textures in their paper. Many different ways you can do things. And again, still getting my, still looking for my, my lights, my light colors. I screw my eye a lot, and these shadows going right at me are going to are very distracting to me, and so I'm going to try to avoid them <laughs> a little bit because um, I'm going to get my smaller brush now because I'm going to start doing my darks because this is pretty much all my light colors that I see. See a little bit more. This rack right here is a lot of green, mossy colors to it. A little green in here. So very, very. Um, drab colors very drab but you can up them a little bit so now that my top part is probably dry now i'm going to go in there and start adding those trees and making them first kind of lightish i'm taking a lavender and do the background ones first there's so many of them but now they're going to be harder edged and i want them a little bit darker so we have some darker trees. And we got shadows on here. There's a lot of different trees going here. And so I'm going to shift it up a little bit too. A lot of trees. And the darker I make them, the closer they look at, at it. 
so um, I start out with the lighter ones. I do want to put this one really dark one in there right away, so I want to see how my darkest dark will be. So this one will be my darkest dark. I'll put that in there. There's a couple nice branches that go in that direction. Of course, I float my pigment in there. Let's see. Let's see. A little cool color in there. And then... I'm not going to get the shadow in yet, the shadow that's directly in my eyes um, because of the sun being straight on. I first want to get the overall big, big areas of dark and then I'll get the more detailed darks. And for that I'm using a lot of purple, orange. That's pretty much what the color is out there. And then here I put a little blue into that one. It's going to be a beautiful day to go. Oh, look at there's icicles here. But the icicles are light, and so I have to put the, the color that was there first. Let me put a light color here first. A little bit of green. The green is some of the moss. There's, there's moss out there, so. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of trees there, but I'm going to eliminate some of them. Not eliminate them, I'm just not going to put as many in. As you come closer here, see the nice light that's reflecting? You've got these branches coming down. So what I did here was give myself a, a large area of dark, but not the darkest dark. Just an area that is a little bit darker than what is going to be the final. just nice and dark and I'm not going to do the icicles until later when this dries and then I'll go in there and do the icicles that are on the side here what a gorgeous day for for end of February this is Illinois where I'm in Illinois starve rack And there was some darks through the water. We get through here. We got a bunch of leaves, and then we direct exactly the water is dark, and so it's just basically reflecting what's above it. So purple. I'm 
another group of people coming by, coming through. Let me see up there. Little by little, I'm just getting these darks in there. Sorry, I can't do it live, but you'll see this later on. I can maybe even edit a little bit out of it. So here we're gonna put the tree going up. Little fine trees going in there. What a gorgeous day, absolutely gorgeous day today. more trees back here I mean there's so many trees back there um, and you can put them all in you know if you're drawing them and you can put them all in or just let some of them and let some of them be see how my first wash is very light back there now I could have made it slightly darker maybe to get a little bit more of the trees but I can still put them in you always make things darker but I just don't want to make these too much darker because I want them to definitely stay back in the distance I'm just putting all kinds of foliage in there, tree branches. And down here. Always vary it up a little bit. Um, I notice that a lot of beginners, what they do is they tend to always make the trees lined up exactly the same. You know, some of them gotta be, they all gotta be different. Variety. Variety is a spice. <laughs> you gotta put that. A bunch of variety of different now there is a bunch of foliage that comes through here there's like leaves that stayed on to the branches and those are kind of neat i'd like to get those to keep those in there because they are pretty neat to put in i'm putting a bunch in here in this level i'm kind of doing a dry brush here a little bit and then this is the kind of a dark area so i'm going to go and come around the stairs or stairs back there that go up this little hill right here and i can do some Right in this area, it's a little bit darker. I'm going to make the little steps. A little bit darker to here. See how I'm putting it right into the little bit railing. As it goes little by little, um, you're, uh, when you're outside, um, the light will be changing, and actually it's getting higher, and so it's going, it's not shining in my eye as much right now. It's kind of going back into, into just being up above and not straight in front of me. So, which is kind of like I was hoping, <laughs> because painting right into the light, then I get these long shadows, but now I'll get these beautiful shadows that are just perfect, you know, so it all worked out great. Worked out perfect. Okay, let's make this a little bit dark, darker tree. I like using my flat brush when I first start with the trees, and then I go for my round brushes to the branches. But at the first, I just want to have like big areas of light and dark, and just kind of establishing my darks. All right, now let's start getting our our center of interest center of interest is right here and so i've got to make this look really good if i go in there and get my round brush now time for my round brush smaller round brush because i have to make the water look like it's coming right through here without without it having the light and dark pattern the way i want it and also reflecting what's underneath the water or into the water and what's in the, in the water too because you can actually see into the water so you'll see like little rocks down there but first get your middle tones and your lights going first and then you can put in the reflections of the dark after always light to dark so just kind of establish those those middle tones and the lights get the color that you need here there's water running down this way there's a sparkle right down here. It 
that I'm gonna, I kind of got rid of the white and so I'm gonna have to put white paint back into that and this is all mossy right here so this is all moss going up and then we've got a bunch of and I will I'll be using white paint white and light blue paint to put my reflection in um, kind of in a way that's more like um, gouache uh, because I can and uh, I think it's great to do that in um, scenes like this I find it's easier to do it that way than you know I'm not outside and so it's a little bit different than if I'm working in my studio where I can put masking fluid down in a certain time this is I don't have time for that I have to really just go if I got to put opaques on top of things that's fine just do that Anything to make it look like what it is that you're, that you're looking at. So now I'm getting my darker darks in there. Establishing my darks then, my darkest dark, and then these then become my middle tones and lights. See how that was dark at first, but now look at how light it became. And now I can go in there and go around the, go around the, uh, what do you call them? Um, icicles. There's icicles hanging from this little cliff right here on the rock. That's really neat. Very, very cool. I have gotten some shots today that I would have never gotten, like, in the middle of summer. Um, it's just, right now, it's still winter. <laughs> and so, um, it just happens to be a really nice day. And I got here really early, so I can get some really cool shots. And I did. I got some shots that you'll probably never get during the summer. So now we're going to go around the, the um, icicles, negative paint them. I think the hardest part will be to put the leaves in to make it look like leaves, the texture of leaves. So there's a little dark right here. So. Make it super dark underneath right here, get a lot of contrast. Because this, again, this area right through here is my center of interest. So I want to make sure that that's what that is. You look there first. And usually on the edge of water, there's a little sparkle of light. And then also a really dark part right on the edge. It's really dark and really light. I'm kind of using, I should do, I should have broke out some of my gouache colors to put on top of there, thick, thick of that. I think that would be really neat on this one, but next time I'll have to remember to bring my gouache set and then just use that as your thicker parts of your, of your painting. Here I can do the darks. There's so many branches, I gotta get my rigger going here in a little bit. And if you feel that um, the light has changed too much for you when you're out painting on this spot, then you can also um, just uh, stop and then finish it back in your studio. No big deal. Um, if you feel like, because you have a picture, I'll, I'll always take a picture of what I'm doing and then go back and kind of analyze it and then maybe, you know, use the image. Because you know what you, it was out here. I've been staring now at it for at least an hour almost. And so you know what's out here and then you can take it and go from there. You also write little notes into your sketchbook if you get a sketchbook. A bit darker tree right here. Nice one right here, it's a little bit darker. A little 
Check it out, go that way. Nice tree that's falling right here. Boy, it's amazing that they fall in the right in the right spot. <laughs> yeah, we got a lot of a lot of foliage, and I have just I tap basically. Getting foliage by tapping a lot. Tap, tap, tap. Some people like to throw salt in there just to get a texture. Again, it's just a texture, and there's many different ways of getting texture in watercolor, so you use the one that you feel best, that you feel more comfortable with. The icicles now I decided I have to do with um, paint, white paint or lavender paint because I, I, they're not light enough anymore. So I'm just going to take a light color and then just put the icicles in with white paint. Put a little blue into this into the water again because I can see a lot of water, a blue water through here, and then I can put the reflections of that into the into the tree later. I can put a darker tree into that, and also add white to make it look like it's sparkling because it is. It has been sparkling. I took a little liberty and put not so many trees right there so your eye has a place to go to. And as I noticed to myself, I'm squinting a lot, you know, to get the, the big pattern again. So I have to get that. Always remember you have to get your pattern, your big pattern. That's the most important part of your painting is getting the large patterned value pattern. All the little things do help it to make it look like what it is, but you, for the composition of the entire painting, you've got to make sure you, you keep the keep the value pattern that you started with. And that's you do a little sketch, sketch for. A lot of times I do that in my head. Um, cause I, if I want to start fast, I just kind of do it in my head. I kind of have an idea. I knew it was going to be like this little S or Z, a little shape through here, dark trees, and then make all that stuff in the background light. As I come forward, it gets dark, and then the darkest will be this water. And other things that, besides that, like this, the branches and stuff hanging in front here, that too a little bit. Because once you have that established, then um, there's a lot of things you can do to the, the painting, because the painting will stick, and it'll be, it'll be fine, as long as you stick with that pattern. And then, here, I'm going to put the, this branch right there. See that branch right back there? I'm just going to put that down through there, this tree through there. It just until it gets to the part where it, you don't see it anymore, but then it, it, even down here, it'll be lighter in the light part of the water. So I can see into the water, but it's still part of the that tree will keep on going. Reflect into that part of the water. There's so many things happening in the water. There's the ripple, there's the sunlight. All kinds of things happening when you're looking into the water. 
nice thing about oil painters, they can, and acrylic painters, they can put it right on top. And actually I can do that too now. And now that I use gouache, I can just go in there and make the white back. I can bring the white back by just adding white, like right here. I'm going to add white now. So there's really big sparkles right here. And then since that's wet, it's going to distribute, and I didn't want that to happen, but <laughs> oh well. <laughs> we, can, we can go with it. I can't believe how gorgeous a day it became today. I just had planned this because I realized that um, I did a workshop yesterday in Ottawa, Illinois. And I realized that the state park is really close to this place. And so I came in here and decided to do some painting. And it just happened to be a great, great day. Just a little bit more. Put some trees back here. And then I'm gonna call it quits because I think I'm over an hour now. Definitely probably over an hour. And then I will maybe take it home, look in my in, and look at it in the studio, see what else I can put in there compared to the, the photo. And then learn from that. You know, he's learning something. That's the neat thing about it. You always learn things when every time you're out here. You know, um, a lot of people don't like plein air painting because of, you know, the, there's so much to do, so much to bring, um, so many lights changing and everything, but there's so many things that are good about it. It's almost outweigh the bad. And the one of the biggest thing is actually seeing what happens in nature, like seeing the colors that you really are out here, looking at it not through a camera because the camera will change it a little bit, distort it a little bit. So that they always say the camera lies, right? And it kind of does. It doesn't give you the exact thing that you're seeing, like the movement of the water, and, and so it's really nice to get out here and then just see the original, what the original is, and kind of memorize it. Try to memorize it a little bit. Kind of. And yeah, the white, um, leaving the white, and a lot of this is sparkling. When you're looking into the sun, a lot of it sparkled. And so that, you're going to have to use some white paint when it's dry. You're going to have to go in there with, or, or go around it in the very beginning and put masking fluid down. Because now it's wet right now and I can't pretty really quite get that look that I want of pure white. So I know a lot of teachers do not teach you to use black or white in watercolor. And I find it to be um, necessary to have black and white in your palette because there's things you can make your colors lighter and darker. later in the day and I'm getting a lot of people out here now so I'll be stopping in a little bit.
cleaning a bunch of trees now back here again. Well, it's amazing how the how it light changes as it goes by. Uh, back here, I'm gonna put a little bit of violet. Kind of get the the darks back into this side right here. No. Now I'm gonna get my, my rigger and start doing a bunch of little little tree branches and little things. Now I'm using pure white, just putting in my lightest lights, all the little sparkles that make the edge of the... There's a lot of sparkle in the sky because the sun is pointing right at me, and so you're going to get a lot of things shining in your eye. And that means dots, a lot of dots in here. All this white back there, also the same thing. Um, I can tone it down a little bit if I wanted to push it back a little bit, which I think I want to do. Push it back because I want to keep my lightest light right through there. And see how now these reflections go right into the water. And then if you want to put like rocks in there, you use the same color that you have already there. And then just put little dashes there for like rocks underneath the reflection. Or they would be part of the reflection, they go right through the reflection. And I'm also using light color um, with, with like an orange, white and orange, to get some of the leaves, you know, some of the, some of the um, light colors of the leaves that are on top. Again, this is another way of getting texture. And it definitely is not transparent. Um, it, it is opaque. But I find it to be a neat look. I think that it's a kind of a really neat look to use light on top of that, here now the railing is lit up white, and so I can put a little bit of a white right down the middle of the railing. And get some sparkling. Now let's put the shadow in for the, the last thing I'm going to do is this little shadow from the trees pointing straight down. And get it across this light area because the, the, it's going to be going across here the lighting and it'll just show that the sun is right down here all right i think i'm gonna leave it at that let's let me show you a close-up and then we'll finish it a little bit more and look into my camera and I think this area right there is a little bit too light. So I'm going to tone that down. I'm going to tone that down with a little bit of purple. So I want my light to kind of come through here, here, and down. And my dark is basically this tree. Going this way. And there you have it. So 44 minutes. That's about a, that's about good enough. <laughs> All right. So until next Sunday, guys. Um, maybe I'll get some. Um, maybe it'd be nice again, but um, I get some reception, and I can do it live. This was not live. This was recorded, and so have a great rest of the Sunday. Bye bye.